Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jessica Smith. I'm the membership services manager here at Sabre. Um, we'd like to start off by first thanking Sports Info Solutions for sponsoring all of our student sessions this weekend. Today, we're gonna begin with a job networking session. So we have some really great industry partners ready to speak to you. Um, they're gonna share a little bit about their jobs, how they got into those roles, and some career advice. So if you have any questions for them, feel free to drop those in the chat and we'll get to them as time allows. So our first guest today is Corey Schwartz with Major League Baseball. So Corey, whenever you're ready. Uh, thanks, Jessica. And thanks to everybody for Saber for having me on. Um, my name is Corey Schwartz. I'm the Vice President of Data Operations for Major League Baseball. Um, starting my 22nd season with MLB. Uh, prior to working here, I started my career with the New York Yankees in media relations. I actually did get fired by George Steinbrenner. Um, then I went on and worked for the National Basketball Association for about five and a half years, worked in the dot-com startup space for a little while, and then joined Major League Baseball in 2001. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about data operations at MLB. I put together a PowerPoint that I'm gonna go through very quickly for two reasons. Um, number one, I hope Jessica will be able to share that with all of you and so you can read it a little bit more and follow up with questions if you have it. Uh, but number two, I just want to leave time at the end for q and I think that's really what we're here for. So uh, I'm going to move very quickly through the PowerPoint, and then hopefully we can, we can chat a little bit at the end. Okay, so uh, you should be able to see the, uh, the, the slate now, the, the opening slide, I hope. Give me one head. Give me one yes. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so data operations at Major League Baseball. What does that mean? Um, we manage people and systems in the ballparks to produce data information that we use for all aspects of our business. Um, we're 35 full time, but we have close to 800 part time people all over the country in a various in various capacities, covering major leagues, minor leagues and so forth. And the data that we capture is used really through every part of the industry. Um, fan facing consumer products, um, broadcasts, media partners, the clubs, scoreboards. You name it, every part of baseball consumes data that is generated by our group. So I kind of think of us as the air that people breathe when it comes to baseball. We're all around, but nobody actually thinks of it. It's just there and, and it's really good for you. Um, because we're a data group, we'll give you a few numbers. As I mentioned, we're starting our 22nd season. We have 35 full time staff. Last year, we employed about 550 part timers. Um, as I mentioned earlier this year, that number will be growing to over 800 which shows that we have a lot of stuff going on. Um, last year, we covered about 15,000 games, which was down a little bit from our peak before COVID. We covered over 18,000 games uh, at all levels and all leagues of play throughout the world. In our department history, since we started in 2001, we've covered over 284,000 games. So we've got an outside shot of cracking 300,000 this year, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, we've been to 13 different countries. In an average MLB season, we'll track about 725,000 pitches, 165,000 batted balls. So there's a lot that goes into creating the data of baseball. Um, here's a shot from a press box where our people work. This is in Houston uh, for a college tournament back in February. So I'll tell you a little bit now about the different roles that we use in our department. Uh, the first one is the stringer. That's the application on the right that they use, one little screenshot of that. Stringers are responsible for entering pitch by pitch and play by play data for the entire game. So the most fundamental use of this is that this is what creates the box score and also the season stats. So league leaders, player stats, standings, all of that data is generated ultimately by the stringer. And we have one stringer at literally every single game we cover all over the world. Very similar to the stringer is a program we call the boss operator and boss stands for balls, outs and strikes. It's a very similar program to the stringer in that they're entering similar types of data, but the boss application is designed specifically for speed. The stringer application needs to be detailed and complete, so we go a little bit slower. The boss application is designed for speed um, because that's used in broadcasts. It's used in the um, automatic balls and strike system. This is how we create the top and bottom of the strike zone. <coughs> Excuse me. And we also distribute this data to Sport Radar, our uh, data syndication partner that they use for sports betting all over the world and a lot of other different purposes. So the boss application is designed to be a snapshot of the game right now. It doesn't complete the box score. It doesn't sort of keep the full lineups. It's only about what's happening in the game at this very moment. Uh, the field timing coordinators, or you may hear, you know, clock operators, pace of game, um, they manage the clocks that right now are used to time the inning breaks and between at bat at breaks. 
Um, based on the new CBA, that may include pitch clocks at some point in the future, and this is how that will get controlled. So uh, that person you see over the shoulder on the right is Chris Lentini, who's worked with us since 2003. Uh, that was him working the clock at a World Series game last year. All right, the tracking operators. You've probably heard of StatCast. These are the people who manage that system and make sure that the technology is tracking every player on the field, uh, whether it's the fielders, the base runners, the coaches, even the umpires, and tracking the ball, and then sort of tweaking the system along the way to make sure all of that automatically identified data is accurate. So StatCast data is used on broadcast. It's used in consumer products. We rolled out the new Field Vision product last year, which is a 3D simulation that's super cool. Um, and all of that data is provided to the clubs every day that they use for analytics and, and research. We also manage radar-based systems in the Atlantic League, where we're testing out the automatic balls and strike system, and in the Dominican Republic. Um, ABS uh, is the automated balls and strike system, or as you may have heard, robot umpires. Um, the technology for tracking the pitch comes from StatCast, but there's a big hardware component that the umpires have to use. They have to make sure that they're getting the calls from the ABS system, that they're hearing it in their earpieces. And this year, that'll be expanded where they'll be uh, making announcements in games for instant replay. So the same technology that's used for the, the automatic balls and strikes system will support uh, instant replay this year as well. And finally, the game day compliance monitors are responsible for rules enforcement in the ballpark. Uh, the most two, two most common use cases you've probably heard about are electronic sign stealing and doctoring the baseballs. So our group is responsible for observing what's going on in the ballpark during the games, uh, reporting violations back to the baseball operations department and enforcing the rules on the books. So I mentioned earlier, um, you know, we're gonna be up to 800 people this year. Um, the bad news is we're a little bit late in our hiring season right now. We generally try and wrap up our hiring by January and February. But because of the volume of people we're hiring this year, we still do have a lot of openings and we look for people during the year as well. Um, unfortunately, sometimes, uh, you know, people have to leave the job for, for any of a number of reasons. And we're always looking to add in different markets doing different things. So that link at the top, mlb.com slash careers slash opportunities, search for data operations and you'll see a number of jobs listed there. Um, we staff all 30 major league clubs, minor league clubs, Atlantic League, all over the country. And Part-time help is really critical to what we do. You know, I've talked about all the things they do in the ballpark. Out of our 35 full-time staff, 22 of those people started out as part-time operators in our group before moving into full-time roles. And many of our operators have gone on to work for jobs with clubs, with media providers, uh, with technology partners. So it's really a great entry-level job for someone who loves baseball. Um, we look for people who, whether you're a college graduate or a retiree, if you love baseball, if you have a passion for baseball and really a demonstrable knowledge of the rules and gameplay, and you're available at the times we need to cover games, which a lot of, unfortunately is a lot of nights and weekends and holidays. And if you can learn new technology, those are the kind of people we look for. Um, we have people who have worked in, in sports and baseball media for decades. We have people who've never set foot in a press box in their lives. But if you have those sort of basic skills of understanding of baseball, the right availability and, and the right uh, passion for technology and, and, and learning new things, you can be great at these jobs. And we're always looking for people who have those qualifications. So I've been talking about data operations, but Major League Baseball is a very big company and there's a lot of stuff going on besides just data operations. Um, that link I mentioned, there are a number of jobs posted there beyond my department. Everything from baseball operations, content, communications, events, and so forth. And we have a, a very big technology group that builds consumer products, VR applications. We manage infrastructure in the ballparks, broadcast technology, and a whole number of other things. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities to get involved with Major League Baseball in a lot of different ways. I'm here to sort of spread the gospel of data operations, but you know, if you want a career in baseball, um, we have opportunities and it's a very big industry. So you know, start knocking on doors. That's really the best way to, to find out about things and to build, you know, to build your career path is just start knock, knocking on the door. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, I intentionally went through that very quickly. Uh, the slides will be available to you later on, I hope. And uh, if we have a few minutes, I'd love to take a few questions. Okay, we've got one in the chat uh, from Tobias said, when you were in media relations, what role did you play in that department? And how do you use that, in that information to enhance what you do with data operations? Um, thanks for the question. 
So when I was with the Yankees back in the day, it was pre-internet. That's how old I am. Um, and we connected to a Major League Baseball information system over an old uh, computer system that looked like a suitcase. The availability of data at that point was updated once per day. It was very limited, traditional league leaders. Um, and what we do is far beyond that today. Um, we provide real-time, pitch-by-pitch data that's available to the clubs and, and fans in a lot of different ways. Um, if a scoring change happens during a game or, or after a game, we make that change immediately. It's not just once per day. And the suite and, and you know, the availability and the, the depth and breadth of data is considerably greater. Um, obviously, traditional media and, and, you know, sort of the traditional fan experience is based on league leaders and home runs and RBIs. But the StatCast data has really opened up a, a great new way to look at the game for clubs as well as for fans. Um, and we make all of that data available to the clubs every day. So um, the guy who replaced me at the Yankees is the media relations director for another club right now. And I don't think he knows that he replaced me, um, so I never bring it up. But I, I do have a good understanding of what the media relations staff do, and and we go out of our way to help them out and support them in their day to day because that helps fans. Okay, I don't see any other questions in the in the chat, um, but as I mentioned, the, the slides will be available, and if anybody wants to follow up with me directly or learn more about those jobs. Uh, I guess the last slide I didn't show has my email address. Uh, it's corey.schwartz at mlb.com. And feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm available pretty much 24 by 7, unfortunately. But uh, that's fine. Um, one more question before I go from Stephen. I mentioned part-time positions for recent grads to retirees. Are there positions available for current college students? Um, ultimately, we'll hire people if they have the qualifications we're looking for. The understanding of baseball, um, the availability, the, under, the ability to learn new technologies. The only reason we shy away from hiring college students sometimes is because, um, you know, your availability isn't there. You may be uh, in one place over the summer when games are going on, but a different place in the spring or fall, uh, you know, based on the school calendar. But ultimately, if people are available to cover games, um, we have we do have some people who are in college. We actually hired one young woman this year who's a senior in high school um, who's going to be working a strictly remote role from home. Uh, I think you'll get to know her name in the future. I could see her going on to have a bright career in, with a. Uh, with major league clubs someday. So ultimately it comes down to love of baseball, understanding of technology and the right kind of availability. Um, and we, we are interested. Okay, now the questions are coming in. Uh, question from Hidenobu. I hope I didn't uh, mispronounce that, but uh, that was as close as I could get on the first read. Um, are data operations more like data collection than data analytics like dashboarding? Um, a little bit of both. Uh, the operation side that I'm on is more involved in creating the data that's used for all of the different purposes. So we don't do uh, you know, what you would think of as traditional analytics in our group, but we support those efforts. Uh, it's, it's our job to understand all of the different use cases throughout the industry that our data is being used for and to make sure that those use cases are supported. So we work very closely with our analytics group. We work closely with clubs, with, prod, with uh, product development teams to make sure that they have what they need to provide the products that, they, that they're responsible for. Uh, from Joshua, I'm, I'll make this my last question, so I, I know we want to stay on schedule. What does a data operations position look like on a resume? Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we do have people that have worked for us and gone on to work for clubs and, and a lot of different roles in the industry. I wouldn't say it's solely um, based on having worked for data operations, but I think when you're applying for any job, the prospective employer will look at your, your past experience and see if you have things that speak to the job you're applying for. Um, you know, if you want to work in baseball, if you want to work in analytics, then you should have some background doing things that are relevant to that. So having worked for us, uh, I think is a plus. I wouldn't say it's the type of thing that will, will slam dunk, get anybody a job anywhere. Um, but it's definitely a plus. And, you know, we're, we're happy to have people go out and, and promote that they've worked for us. And I always appreciate it when I see someone that has worked for us go on and get a job in another part of the industry. It's very gratifying. And, and we always try and support that. Um, all right, I'm gonna answer Cody. Um, that, that'll promise will be my last one. Um, what kind of outside experience would you say would be beneficial towards getting a position in MLB? So as I mentioned, Cody, um, if you can demonstrate an understanding of baseball, that's the most important thing to us. We literally give all of our prospective new hires a quiz to see what they know about baseball. Um, if you do well and, and you have interesting background experiences on your resume and you go on to the interview, we will ask you what you know about baseball. You will be verbally talking about baseball. Um, and again, I think an understanding of technology 
if you've worked in sports media or, or any type of media environment, um, any type of fast paced environment where you're dealing with remote support because uh, our jobs are in the ballparks, but support may be elsewhere. Um, you know, we don't have to have people who've worked in baseball or sports media before, um, but if you can demonstrate a good range of skills and an ability to learn and an understanding of baseball, that's good enough for us. Um, so I'm going to wrap here and hand it back. Thank you to everybody for the time. I apologize if I went over um, and I look forward to hearing from some of you again in the future. Enjoy the conference. Thanks again. Thank you, Corey. Um, our next guests are going to be Rob Doherty and Matt Manacharian from Sports Info Solutions. Oh, thank you. And uh, thank you, Corey. Yeah, uh, that was a, a great segment there. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, so uh, Matt and I uh, handle two areas and roles here that we're going to go over today. Um, I am the president of Sports Info Solutions, and uh, I'm going to cover the operational aspect of, of uh, some of what we're uh, going to be reviewing. And uh, Matt is our vice president who handles football and research and development. Uh, he's going to handle kind of the R&D portion of that. Now, um, quick overview here. I've been with uh, Sports Info Solutions since 2014. I came in uh, in a IT role and headed up the uh, basically the direction of the tech stack. And uh, from there have evolved and moved forward and had a larger and larger business role. But you know the key is really understanding the day-to-day -day operations. How can you uh, enhance that? And how can every year the new group of seasonal workers as well as our full-time workers help make a difference in the industry? So uh, we are a uh, approved vendor that works very closely with Major League Baseball. And, uh, interact uh, at various levels with Corey and his groups. Uh, we, uh, we have a lot of relationships across all of the teams. The company itself has been around for over 20 years now. Uh, we focused initially only on baseball. Now, over time, we have diversified and we've uh, changed our brand to make it uh, Sports Info Solutions to cover the fact that we're more than just baseball nowadays. However, we're going to focus on baseball but I do want to mention that if you take a look at our various openings and you have interest in areas beyond baseball, there may also be opportunities beyond what we are focusing upon within the session. So uh, one announcement that I want to make that'll kind of give everyone in this group a, a heads up. Uh, on Monday, we're going to be making a formal announcement. We have hired a VP of baseball uh, to handle the overall structure of a uh, baseball operations, I'm going to be working on kind of handing off some of those responsibilities in the coming weeks. Uh, and it's an ex-ball player. Um, so uh, just look for an announcement on Monday with that. And uh, we're super excited within our organization. And it really kind of carries forward into the growth plan and the expansion that we have been doing. Uh, you know, we started as a relatively small company. And, uh, and, and honestly, every time we do payroll, there just is more and more names and more rows on that sheet every single time. So uh, we have hundreds of people working for us at this point. Uh, and in the course of a year, we probably are now close to seven or 800 people who work at some level for us uh, for some portion of the year. And uh, we're very dedicated toward promoting from within uh, many individuals, you know, myself, and Matt, uh, we all worked our way up in, in different spots. We either started at this company at the bottom, started somewhere else at the bottom. Uh, I'll let Matt tell his story in a moment. Uh, in my case, I actually started in journalism, and, uh, working for ABC when I first got out of college. My dream was always to work in sports. And uh, about 23 years ago, I got a chance to uh, basically just take whatever it was that was offered to me. And, uh, and from there, I took that opportunity. And a key thing I'll say is, is always be willing to do the, the things that are, are available and out there. You want to focus your goal toward getting to a real job satisfaction as you progress in your career. But sometimes you just want to make sure that if there is a door open, you get your foot in that door and you use that opportunity to prove all the rest of your skills. Everything else that you bring to the table that they might not be looking for at this moment but you know that you possess and really drive you as a person and just be willing to uh, 
uh, you know, continue to apply those skills as those opportunities arise. And so um, I know we had reached out to everyone uh, via email uh, when we were doing our initial seasonal hiring. Uh, I've heard from uh, the various operation department leaders uh, that we filled the majority of those roles at this point, uh, but always kind of keep your eyes open as far as uh, if we have any attrition or other openings. Uh, we do a lot of video editing projects uh, for, for, uh, for the league. Uh, and then we also do all kinds of film breakdown, both the domestic and international leagues. So we, uh, we do continue to expand out, not just covering professional, but amateur, not just domestic, but as I said, also international. And, um, you know, let me segue things over to Matt right now, because we do have some nice opportunity here in the R&D portion uh, that I think uh, we should be able to explain in, in a little bit more detail. Matt, if you would like to take over at this point. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Um, so uh, like Rob mentioned at, at SIS, we have uh, a whole bunch of different uh, departments and job functions that we do. So what we do as a company, is we gather data on baseball, which we've been doing for 20 years, like Rob said, but also now football and basketball, we have jobs as well. We're gathering on-field data, and then our R&D team is analyzing that data, and we're building different products that we share with the teams, but also other people kind of in the sports ecosystem, these data and analytics that we collect and that we analyze. Um, so I'll give a quick background on myself. My uh, career has been meandering, as I think you'll find that many people's are. Um, I started my career as a football scout. So I was a scout for the Saints for four years and then for the Browns for a year before I ended up going back to grad school. I went to uh, Columbia's sports management program, learned everything I could about sports analytics in different sports, and then actually found my way over to SIS where they were getting into football and they had all this expertise, like we said, in gathering data, analyzing that data and helping teams but not a lot of experience with football and the intricacies that there and, and what that presents. And so I've come in there um, and had been lucky enough to help build up the football department. And in the last year, things have really accelerated at SIS. We've um, really started to grow at a rapid, rapid rate, like Rob was talking about. So it's a great time to be involved with kind of where we are and where we're heading. I'm constantly joking that if you've seen the movie, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, we're like the 20 year old startup. Uh, there's really a lot going on right now and it's an exciting place to work. Specifically on the R&D side, Rob mentioned that we're gonna have a new vice president of baseball who's gonna be overseeing both our operation and our research on the baseball front. Um, but we're looking to hire a research analyst. I'll make sure everybody had, you should already have the listing uh, shared through Saber, but I'll make sure to drop that into the chat too here. Um, but what we're looking for in the analyst role is somebody who can take all of the data that we're gathering that we get from other sources and help us to analyze that data um, and find insights within that data. So um, people with a data science background are going to be really well suited for this role and people that really understand baseball on a high level are going to be really suited for this role. Uh, the traits that we look for that'll make you stand out, uh, there's really three things. And I would say that's technical ability, that's baseball knowledge and ingenuity, and it's uh, a passion and demonstrated effort. Uh, so I'll go through each of those kind of one by one. In terms of technical skills, uh, we live in SQL in our R&D department. So if you don't know SQL already, um, Hopefully, um, if you do have experience with coding, it's something that's not too difficult to pick up, uh, kind of the SQL basics. But if you're an expert in this, in this um, that'll definitely give you a leg up. Besides that, uh, most, of our, most of our analysts usually spend most of their day in either R or Python. Uh, not a big preference in terms of, we don't require that you use one or the other when, when you work at, at SIS um, on our research team. But generally, uh, the, best con the best candidates that we have, kind of when you go to the top 10%, usually those people are going to have experience with SQL and either R or Python. Usually, um, some combination there is kind of going to be the base technical building blocks that we look for. 
And then of course, statistical knowledge and uh, the ability to um, analyze data uh, through all different, whether that's kind of traditional means or machine learning. Um, we, we have different skill sets around the department and we're always looking to, to bring in anybody that can help us expand our skill set. From a baseball knowledge perspective, that's just as important as the technical ability, maybe even more important. Um, to an extent, uh, technical ability can be learned and it's certainly a prerequisite, but the really special people that, that really make a difference in our company and in, and in the greater baseball and sports community are the people that really understand the sport deeply, can connect that to the data and can look at things in unique and novel ways. Um, and in order to do that, it just takes a great understanding of the game, spending a lot of time thinking about it. Um, and um, I think that sort of stuff shows through in people's work that they do. Um, and that's another point where I'd like to mention where another thing that can help separate you if you're looking for, especially entry level jobs, is if you've done work on your own, if you have stuff that you put out on the internet, you have a GitHub, whatever it is, um, where you put your work out there and give us the opportunity to see what you can do, even with just publicly available data, that's one of the best ways that you can give yourself a, a sort of leg up for any of these sorts of jobs. I mean, and finally, I mentioned the passion and, and the demonstrated uh, effort that, that needs to be applied. That's, you know, the number one thing that I say, great employees at SIS, they're just really about what we do. And it's hard to, to quantify that as much as we try to. Um, but really, it's about uh, a passion for the sport, for the work that we do, that um, isn't just, oh, yes, I care about this. Let me tell you how much I care about it. But it jumps out through your work. Um, the level of care that it takes to really do things in this area is, is a high bar to entry. So I would say if you want a career really anywhere around sports, make sure that you really, really love it uh, because that's going to show up sooner or later. Um, so I'm going to post um, this, the, the posting for the baseball research role that we have. Um, and I think we have some good time for questions as we can open them up to the audience. So here we go. Looks like we're starting to come in. Uh, Grace asks, thanks for speaking with us. I was wondering if it's necessary to have scouting experience, and if not, will you gain that knowledge in a position at SIS? So I think this is asking a little bit more about the um, operation style of roles that, that Rob was talking about. The, the research role, certainly you wouldn't need scouting experience. would be a great help. Um, but on the operation side, it's not something that you need to already have experience with. You do need to have an understanding of baseball. And so well, what we will do is, as we go through the hiring process, we will um, give you some tests that'll help give us a better understanding of what your level of baseball knowledge is. And whether it's something where you played in the past, you watched it religiously, um, you've worked for a team, you've done media, scouting, whatever it might be, um, any of these sorts of paths can be relevant. And what really matters is, is your knowledge of the game and, and your ability to uh, put in the work that we ask of you. So uh, we will train you up. The very first thing that happens when you, when you get a job with us is we send you pre-training materials. And then as soon as we bring you in, um, we put you through an intensive training. And before you'll ever start charting any games or anything like that, um, we're going to make sure you're at the ability level where, where you have all the skills that you need to go forward. So you don't need the scouting rec, uh, experience as a prerequisite. It's great if you do, but, but not necessary at all. All right, um, and Matt, I've got one that's a direct message uh, from Sam Schneider. Uh, Sam, uh, first off, uh, welcome aboard. I uh, understand here uh, you just started your internship here uh, with SIS. Um, follow up with me later on as far as whether you're local here in the Lehigh Valley or you're working remote. Um, I'd love to touch base with you later on. And um, as Sam's question was essentially to Matt and I, and in what, what did we do at SIS that helped us amongst our peers get the promotions and be able to get into a higher level of, of leadership? And, and I think this is a really good question. Um, it's not gonna help you get that first job, but you know, how do you handle that once you're working your way up? Um, so I'll, I'll give my specific example here of what was a real difference maker. Uh, we had had a, a scenario and a situation here where uh, Prior president Ben Jed Levesque uh, had an opportunity to move to MLB. 
And uh, that created a kind of a, a, a bit of a, a situation here where we had some skills that were leaving the company. Uh, we had some skills that we needed to figure out what did we have internally. And in this particular case, there was a situation where we needed someone to take the reins on finance in the company. And um, I was the one that raised my hand and said, you know, hey, I will work on, on getting those skills, building up what I had learned in school, dusting it all off, spend a bunch of time at night and weekends, uh, picking up what was necessary to be able to actually carry that within a corporation in, in an actual environment. And, um, you know, by taking actions such as that, being, you know, willing to press what was my internal comfort level, willing to take skills that I know could help the greater good of, of the company and, and really kind of also build myself as a person. And that combo of, of both the opportunity as well as the willingness to present yourself to try to execute it and the dedication to execute it is one of the key ways where you can help make a difference, stand out amongst your peers. And then when those opportunities come where you have to move someone up, uh, that can help give you that advantage. There's more to it than that, but that's a key way, I think, from an external standpoint where you can help yourself stand out. Uh, Matt, if you would like to discuss on your side. Yeah, uh, no, I think that was a, a great answer. Uh, work hard, uh, care about what you do, um, control the controllables, and hope that uh, you know the, the results take care of themselves. Just like uh, the way I like to look at analyzing sports, I think that's how I analyze my career. Uh, process first and let the results take care of themselves. Um, Kishore asks, uh, does SIS work at all with professional leagues, MLB, NFL, or is it a completely independent data organization? So we are an independent organization. We're a private company, but we work with lots of different teams and lots of different leagues. We have uh, league level relationships with MLB specifically, uh, where we do uh, a ton of different things with them that help support baseball in lots of different ways. We're also working with individual teams. We're working with media organizations like ESPN. Um, it, it really runs the gamut. Anybody who's uh, got a use case for sports data, especially on field sports data, um, those are people that, that we're working with. So we are independent, but we work kind of as a member of that of the ecosystem. Right, uh, Matt, let me take the next one here, which is during the off season, what kind of work would an analyst do? Um, that's a, it's actually a great question. I see uh, Christian Eggers also said, uh, great question. I wondered that when I took the job in, in 2014 and it was December and I was like, what exactly is, is gonna go on? Um, and I found out an immense amount data validation. Um, so first you're doing a reflective look back, analyzing everything you've just done, also comparing, making sure year over year that everything is solid in, in your database, everything is solid with your data collection, but you're also then prepping. So the analyst is gonna also help work with the rest of the team to figure out what kind of new data points, what, what new areas are we gonna go to? And have we done enough research to make sure, you know, that it's, it's going to be a data collection that's going to create something that's ultimately going to become a metric that's both um, quantifiable in its measurement, as well as having the ability to uh, live on the shelf and become a product and, and create a revenue stream. And so the analysts are, are working there and trying to really figure out how to make sure that ultimately where we're going to go to market with items is you know we're putting the energy in, into the right uh, bins at that point and so uh, matt anything you want to add on that one yeah it's a very cyclical kind of process that we go through where we're, we're gathering all of this data we're analyzing all of this data and then when the season ends we're trying to look back do a retrospective figure out what we could do better going forward what maybe we did some analysis that points towards needing a new data point to be collected in the future so the analysts will go back to the ops staff and say, hey, we'd really like to add this. How can you guys figure out how to fit that in? And the operations staff, along with our engineers, are working on figuring out how we can add that to our data collection and integrate it into our different metrics that we'd be collecting into the future. Um, and then, you know, we might have some analysis that gets back to the ops group and the ops group says, hey, we've been watching and there's this new type of strategy that's being employed. You know, there's a, there's a new pitch that's been designed by this player and we're seeing it here. We need to make sure that we can properly collect data on that so that the, the, anal the uh, research team can analyze it well. So it's constantly uh, cyclical. 
And just because you're not in season doesn't mean that there's no work to do. There's a, there's a ton that goes on all year long. And in certain ways, the off season's even more of a crunch. The certain parts of the off season are even more of a crunch than certain parts of the season, right? Getting the season started every year is hard. Once we're in July and August, that's really not, um, we're kind of just, you know, smooth sailing at that point from an ops standpoint. It's just getting the work done there. Whereas when you get to November, um, that can be a really high leverage part of the off season, right? We're preparing for winter meetings. We're trying to make sure that, that anything that we're preparing for the future season is, is put into place. So the, the year ebbs and flows in, in different ways. A couple of other uh, kind of check the box questions. Is this a remote job or in person? The research role is remote. You're available to go into our office in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, if you prefer. But the, the research team at this point is fully remote. Our operation is still centralized in the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. However, we offer both remote and in-person positions on the op side. So as, as you apply for any of those jobs, um, there, there are different positions that we have available, whether you're available to work remote or in person. Um, also, Chris asked, how soon is your department looking to hire full-time or internship uh, positions? I provided the link in the chat um, we're looking to hire that full-time research role, uh, ASAP, really. In terms of a lot of our uh, seasonal video scout roles, most of those are filled up for this year. However, um, this time of year, things tend to be touch and go. Um, sometimes we'll have uh, scouts that aren't going to be able to make it through our training or for whatever reason, have life get in the way of the job. So there are times where we're looking to fill in um, even if even if we're pretty much on the tail end of our of our hiring process for this season, there are times when we will kind of bring in reinforcements during the season. So I would encourage everybody to apply, to apply, get your name on out there. If nothing else, you'll be that far ahead when it comes to it for next year. Jessica and Scott, I don't know if we're getting close to time or if we can take some more. Please let us know. You go ahead and take one more, Matt. Uh, great. Um, what level of SQL in detail do you think is necessary? I don't think that any level of coding experience is necessary. Well, there's no level of coding experience necessary for any of our ops roles. Those are not um, positions where that'll be required of you. That said, for anybody who comes into our organization as a video scout, we do offer SQL classes internally for free where we try to train you up to give you some of those data skills, some of those building blocks. On the research side, um, there are people that have joined our department without having any experience in SQL before uh, joining the company. If that's the case, um, more likely than not, they're going to have lots of experience in another programming language um, or something similar. Um, but there's no requirement. There's nothing, nothing that you see. And I put this, you know, even on any job listing that you see, I would say this not just for our job, but for any job. It, just because it says it's required doesn't mean that it's necessarily required, required. Um, there are lots of different traits that different candidates have for jobs that help separate them. So I would I'll push back on trying to say there's this level of aptitude that, that you need or this level of experience that you need. Um, more is better, but there are lots of different ways to get there. And yes, Christian, you can learn, see, you can learn some of the finer points of coding on the job, especially if you have experience with statistics and baseball knowledge. And the scouting internship is only available um, in person or remote in certain states. That's true for the research position as well. We can't hire in 50 states quite yet. We're working to get there. We really transitioned with the pandemic to becoming a, a primary remote company. So um, most states we can hire in, but it's not, it's not all 50 states yet. Great, thank you so much, Matt and Rob. Um, next up, we're going to go to Chris Jones from the Chicago Cubs. Hi hey everybody. I hope that you are all having a good a good morning here. Um, as uh, Jessica just mentioned, I'm, I'm Christopher Jones from the Chicago Cubs. I'm currently our director of research and development. Um, 
I've only been in this position for uh, for at the start of this since the start of this off season, so it's a little bit newer for me. Um, but uh, I can go into a little bit of my career history as everybody else did here. Um, I, I started uh, uh, when I was in economics grad school, um, really wanting to get into baseball directly, and and started looking for internships that would you know provide entry level opportunities to do so. Um, I actually started with uh, what was then Baseball Info Solutions, um, uh, similar to uh, what is now the Sports Info Solutions that, uh, that Matt and Rob were just, uh, were just describing, um, and then also spent uh, a summer with the New York Yankees. Um, uh, at that point in time, I, I actually, uh, I was looking for full-time jobs in the industry, but was not, it was not particularly easy to find those opportunities. So went into medical software for a couple of years while looking for those jobs and ultimately found a, found a position with the, with the Cubs in 2014. And I've been here ever since. Um, and, and have, you know, advanced with experience and, um, and, and hard work and everything that, uh, you know, everybody's been, been mentioning here. Today. Um, I'd like to go into a little bit of an introduction of, of the different things that you know our R and D department um, you know, tries tries to do, and and honestly, I you know kind of a lot of this is going to be reiterating some of the advice that uh, that Matt just provided about the R and D department at at uh, Sports Info Solutions. Um, we uh, we also uh, we function much like a. a a tech consulting startup or, or, you know, or something like this within a larger baseball organization, right? Um, our stakeholders are all of the departments within the organization. We are trying to make sure that every department has access to all of the information that they need and can it operate as efficiently as possible. The, um, the uh, specifically, you know, what we are um, looking for in, 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 in people that are going to have success in, in doing that, right, are, are all of the exact same things that Matt just mentioned, right? It's, it's the, the passion for baseball, the, the technical skills, the ability to create products um, in, in, uh, in, you know, typically digital, uh, you know, software products. Right, um, that we are able to 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 facilitate, you know, bringing that data in and providing it to everybody else in, in the organization as clearly and as um, as effortlessly as possible for them, and helping their workflows operate, you know, more efficiently as well. Right, um, every every department in a baseball organization is focused on their you know specific goals most of the, throughout most of the year that is there is a, a player development group that is trying to make sure that they push forward every athlete to get the most out of them right there's a scouting group that is trying to uh, ensure that they they have tabs on every but all the, the entire population of players whether that's you know across uh, in in a domestic affiliated baseball or or amateurs that they're scouting that they're you know preparing to draft, um, there is a a major league uh, uh, advanced crew that is trying to make sure that there's that our players are prepared to have as much success as possible against everybody that that we're about to face. Um, you know, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of of every different different athlete in the game. Um, in order to make all of those departments function as efficiently as they can, right, we need to make all, all of the questions that they, that, that, that they come up with that they want to know, have, have the answer immediately available to them so that they can fo focus on their actual jobs, right? And, and typically a lot of this is uh, that, that we focus on, right, is tech solutions, right, and, and making sure that we have visualizations, um, analysis, estimates of different skills, um, uh, records of, of what players did at different times, um, you know, efficient ways to track notes um, that, 
uh, you know, that the organization is, is trying to make sure that we have all of our, you know, that, that one person that, that saw this player three years ago, right, somewhere and, and noted something really important about their, their game, right, that we can record that and have that immediately available when this other scout is considering, oh, how might this player fit on our team right now? Um, you know, what, what we're trying to do is, is consolidate all of that information and make it as, as available as possible. So, um, you know, what, what that means to, to you guys, um, I, I, I want to, you know, uh, um, start with like a couple of different pieces of, of career advice for, you know, breaking in and making sure that, you know, this is the, this is the sort of, you know, career that you would like to spend some time with, right? Um, um, I, I do want to emphasize, uh, you know, one of the things that Matt said really, that, that the passion for, for sports, um, you know, these, these jobs take a lot of work. There is a, a, a supply demand component where, you know, this jobs that sound super fun and, and are super fun because you get the opportunity to work on something that you love, right? And um, are, are making a difference on, uh, uh, you know, in, in a measurable way on, on the field for, for somebody, right? Um, th those are the hardest jobs to get, right? And, and you, you need to realize that going in, and, and sometimes that means taking, taking a position that's a little bit less stimulating or something, right? Um, but then, as, as, uh, as, as Rob was and Matt were saying, you know, it's getting your foot in the door, right? It's, it's being able to, you know, show everybody else that you're working with, the value that you bring to the team, to the organization, to everybody that works with you. And, and once, you know, that value is, is demonstrated, right, everybody wants to keep you around. Everybody wants to give you more and more opportunities to succeed, to push, you know, more ideas that you have, right, that will um, be able to affect the organization to uh, um, a greater uh, a greater good. Um, I will say that we uh, um, oftentimes I think that because because we're focusing more like a you know a tech startup within a larger organization. At least the way that the Cubs have have managed um, you know a lot of entry level positions is we do try and keep open minds to what is the best fit for, for people at different times and don't have such a strict program. I do know that other uh, teams have have taken a different approach to that. The, the Yankees, for example, I, I worked with, uh, had much more of like a, oh, here's a, like a cohort of interns that will come in. And, and that can be a good way to, you know, to get opportunities to, um, to work with a lot of, of peers, for example. Uh, we're, we're a little bit smaller in our scope, right? But also are trying to find talent that we think might be able to uh, affect our, our team and our organization in the long run, right? Um, uh, I'd say that, you know, the, the goal with whenever we bring on like an intern is, is, is typically, right, that we're going to be able to, you know, cultivate the, the talent, the skills that people have, get them familiar with the, um, the necessary, uh, the necessary tools that we work with, um, and 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 get them to the point where they can contribute to us, uh, uh, you know, at a full time level, right? That that is our our intention. Anytime we bring in an in, intern, um, we will be, you know, looking for interns throughout a variety of you know specializations, uh, whether that be um, analytics. Right, um, software engineering, um, biomechanics, um, baseball operations, video tech interns. Um, these are they're, they're all different ways to get into the organization and and be able to demonstrate uh, your value. Um, right now, I will I'll post one position that we are are currently. Um, what we're currently looking for, and it's it's a, a full-time software engineering position. And I know I'm, I'm speaking to mostly students at the moment, and so most of you might not be, you know, um, 
perfectly qualified to jump into a position like this immediately. Um, one thing I do want to say in that in that realm is, um, for one, I, I wouldn't be afraid to apply to positions that are, aren't, aren't perfect for you um, at any times, especially in this industry. Um, the you know, we are going to be, when we review these, right, you know, just because somebody is like, uh, you know, oh, this person looks like they're going to be a super talented, you know, intern that could work for us. If, if they aren't at the level of experience that we're looking for, for this particular position, we are going to try and think about what, you know, hey, is there a different opportunity that we could, we could make available? And there's a lower likelihood of that, obviously, especially in the short term, because that's not what we're posting for or searching for. But um, that said, that, that getting that name in people's heads can be very, very useful as we review this the next time. And maybe, you know, when, when this need comes up all of a sudden that, oh, hey, we really need an intern that, that has this specific skill set or something, uh, we'll, we'll be able to look back and, and identify those talents uh, more quickly. Um, so I'll, I'll post that uh, in the chat right now, um, and then I will start uh, addressing some questions that people have um, have started posting. Um, first question was, uh, um, what drew me in medical software um, out of college, and, and what non-baseball work experience would I recommend other than large data set SQL experience that would be most beneficial? Um, I would say, uh, you know, in many ways, um, it, it's not easy to, like a full-time job in baseball is often, you know, we're often looking for specialization in some way that is not something that we, uh, you know, it, that is not a, like a talent that we possess in our organization, right? So it, it's a little bit hard to be, general in a description of what that is because oftentimes that's people who are you know they're they're pushing the boundaries of uh, of a certain field in a way right like they're they're testing out something new they're working on they're working with you know analyzing device data for a new device that is not something that is you know completely ubiquitous right um we already have a lot of a, a lot of knowledge right and therefore um it, it is uh, it is often you know difficult to like be like okay great I, I've picked up this skill therefore I'm ready for a full time job in this um, in this capacity immediately. Um, so I don't have a, a specific recommendation there. The one thing I would say is that if if I had to pick an area in which I think it's like easiest in, in a way, um, I, I think I would I would pick. Uh, Front end software engineering skills um, and, and building up web applications and enriching those are um, are are things that we we have just um, like so much demand for all the time and we're always looking for talent for people that can are, are going to be able to um, take data that's in you know a raw format and difficult for people to understand right and be able to like turn it into a website that everybody knows how to interact with, right? And 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 can and can find what what they want to be here. Yeah. Um, I've got a question on how does your role vary based on team success goals in a specific year? Um, the role varies greatly all the time, I guess I would say in baseball. Uh, there's there's the calendar that that dictates our objectives um, over the course of any given season. Um, there, there are different objectives for the organization as a whole, what we're trying to push forward. Um, I will mention that a lot of, um, a, a lot of projects that we have to push forward are long-term projects that aren't, you know, a, this is something that we can accomplish in a week, um, and, and, and knock out, right? And because of that, you know, we, we are doing planning on like, okay, here's, Here's three months and we're, we're going to try and line out like this is what needs to be first we need to be able to extract this data get it into this format. Somebody's going to have to analyze it in this model right to get this estimate we're going to have to figure out how to visualize that we're going to have to figure out the piping in the through the data pipeline in order to make that readily available, um, etc. Um, 
people have uh, um, been been asking a little bit here about um, you know what, what's the best way to reach out and, and try and get an interview. Um, I would uh, I, I I would recommend um, you know finding uh, finding people on on LinkedIn that work in uh, organizations and reaching out to them directly. Um, I, you know, we're often quite busy and don't have time to get back to every single person that that reaches out because we sometimes do get a lot. Um, but that said, there's there's never any harm. You know, people are usually not bothered. You know, so long as you're polite with that with that sort of request, right? Um, people are happy to, to to read that, and and you, you never know when when the timing is really going to work out. When your your message is going to catch the eye of somebody that's like. Oh, hey, I'm really looking for this at the moment. I, I would say I would really recommend getting getting your name out there to as many people as possible at the start in order to really um, get that uh, get traction on on something. Um, there's a question of what what are some big non baseball resume pieces that that often stand out to you? Um, uh, um, I guess I would. I would say that you know, uh, in non non baseball, at least for my department, right, we're we're really focused on on STEM skills in general, right? Um, any any type of of technical um, advanced sorts of research is always really intriguing. Um, I, I I hate to say it, like I feel like it's often very uh, like discouraging. Like I think a lot of you know it, it's kind of hard to get an entry level full time position um, in an analyst group these days without like a graduate without graduate work of some sort, which is which is not uh, um, I think ideal for the industry, right? I, I think it would be great if we we would have more opportunities for for sing, uh, you know for for people to get in. But as I mentioned, there is so much demand, and it's it's a very difficult um, it's very difficult to land these jobs. Um, that said. Specifically, research on anything that's like in depth, um, really, really cool technical is it, that, that's always going to catch our eye, um, especially when people are uh, showing the initiative to start projects, to start new projects, and push them forward to completion. Because there's a lot about our game that is it requires a lot of hustle, essentially, right? And and the need and the uh, to get things started and have the follow through. Um, those are the uh, those are the skills that I think are are, are really attractive to us. Um, uh, what advice do you have for those who eventually try to transition from a non baseball data role to a baseball analytics R and D role? Um, I do think that that's something that uh, you know. We are we are certainly quite open to um, you know we we know that that not everybody is going to have experience with baseball it's it's one small industry within uh, you know a very large uh, data analytics world um, I I would say um, specifically that uh, um, uh, showing your passion in any way for baseball really does help you make make you stand out there, right? So, like you know, you can be somebody that's had a lot of success in a data analytics, you know, career. Um, making sure that you identify to us in in your application why your um, why you're passionate about this job, why you would be able to you know transition into this industry. And also um, understanding that, like, hey, there's going to be some, you know, some some subject matter expertise that you're going to have to pick up, uh, you know, with that transition as well. Um, and therefore, it, it is oftentimes, you know, it requires a step down in a way from, you know, the position that you may have you may have grown to in in your in your other data analytics career, right? Um, and these are all like <laughs> the reasons why I just keep coming back to like how important the passion is for. For these sorts of jobs, um, Scott and Jessica, I've got many more questions here. I can keep going, uh, but I don't want to hold things up as well. Um, Let's how are we doing? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, 
is your department doing more uh, exploratory analysis or more predictive analytics? Uh, absolutely both. I don't have a, there's no, there's no more about that. They're, <laughs> they're both very important um, at all times. Um, uh, um, do you think uh, dashboarding is, is specialization um, also is speaking another language plus? Um, so I would say that, uh, I'm not sure that I, I would say that dashboarding is, is um, a, a skill that we, uh, um, that we, we prioritize a ton. And, and, and I say that mainly because our, our web applications and mobile apps that, that we're developing, we're trying to um, uh, often make them as as interactive and um, cohesive as possible. If that makes sense, integrated throughout uh, an entire an entire like larger structure. Um, I will say that I think speaking another language is always a plus in baseball, um, and that will pop up in in different ways. Uh, um, uh, you know, throughout your job, but like it is absolutely something that really, you know, um, intrigues us about somebody um, for sure. Um, what kind of uh, machine learning or models does the department use? Um, any specific packages or libraries you would recommend mastering? Um, I do think that there's a lot of statistical techniques that are are really important. I, I, I think. Um, I, I don't want to get too, you know, specific, but I, I think that there's a lot of um, Bayesian, um, you know, uh, regularization techniques, um, uh, uh, computer vision demands, um, uh, yeah, machine machine learning in, in terms of like a more of a black box model, but then also something that can, you know, potentially uh, interpret um, machine learning models, uh, things like that. There's there's so much uh, that we work with. Um, all right, and I will push it back to Jessica now. I'm sorry I did not have time to get through all of these, um, but I will try and respond to some of them separately. No, thanks so much, Chris, and thanks again to all of our guests. We really appreciate your time today. We will distribute a list of available positions from all of our partners uh, after the conference is over, as well as that deck that Corey shared. So keep an eye out for that. Also, just a reminder that the general session is going to resume at noon Eastern today. So we'll see you back here for that, as well as our final student session that's at 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning. Thanks, everyone.